r slash no sleep posted by you slash horror underscore writer underscore 1717 i'm a park ranger in the great smokies but i think this thing came from hell i've lived in east tennessee for most of my life growing up i'd hear old wives tales and urban legends about strange creatures that roamed the forest for the longest time i thought what every other kid thought that they were stories told to scare kids away from dangerous places so they wouldn't fall into a ravine or get lost in the massive wilderness I never thought any of it was more than made-up stories. That's not to say I didn't spend my share of time with covers pulled tightly over my head when the wind blew branches against my window that happened to face the woods. As I grew older I found myself gravitating toward the stories of strange creatures in the woods. That curiosity is what started me to investigate such things in my spare time. People around here seem to be obsessed with Bigfoot. As if he's some local celebrity. They tend to ignore or downplay other cryptids. I don't know why. With the hundreds of thousands of acres of unexplored and barely explored forest, it seems there's lots of space for anything that feels like making its home there could be left in relative peace. Me, I'm more of a fan of Dog Man, unofficially of course. You see, once I graduated high school, my only goal was to become a park ranger. Where else could you go to work and be surrounded by such glorious nature? Even at its most dangerous. There are literally dozens of stories I could tell, but the one that sticks with me is the hikers from a couple of years ago. I remember it was early October. I always make the hike up to Klingerman's Dome several times during autumn. Gazing out over the canvas of trees spouting a myriad of colors, looking every bit like nature's fireworks show reinforced that I made the right career choice. I was on patrol when a call came in to go to the cabins near Fontana Lake. I got the address and headed south, crossing into North Carolina. When I got there I was met by a woman who said her husband, son, and brother-in-law had gone to the lake fishing and hadn't come back. I got the information I needed about their general description, names, and description of the truck and boat, then headed out to search for them. She said they were heading up to Wolf Creek. I called it in and told the station I would be driving down to Flat Branch to see if they went in the river there. It was a decent drive to get there but then it was a decent drive to get pretty much anywhere out in the backwoods of the Smoky Mountains. When I got there I found three trucks parked off to the side. Two of them had empty boat trailers. I checked the description the wife had given me and it matched one of the trucks. I had a beginning point for my search. I walked up to the water and looked both ways, hoping to luck out and find them coming in from a hard day's fishing. No such luck. There was a house nearby so I walked over and asked if they had seen my quarry. The man said he had been out fishing himself yesterday and recalled seeing a boat like the one I described with two men and a boy in it. I asked him which direction they were going and he said west. I asked if he had a boat and could take me up to Wolf Creek. The man's demeanor changed from friendly to deadly quiet. He agreed to take me across the river, but not all the way to Wolf Creek. I accepted what I could get. After a quick jog back to my truck to get my backpack, he ferried me across and quickly left. It was a mile or so to the rural campsite I suspected they had camped at. I started walking along the edge of the river, keeping an eye out for them. It wasn't long until I spotted a boat sitting on the shore. I approached the boat and it seemed to be the right one. Everything about this missing person's report seemed like just someone who stayed out later than planned. It was a little too easy. I would be very happy to find them sitting by a campfire about to pack up and go home. It didn't take long to hike to the campsite, but when I got there things stopped being easy. There were only two tents set up, but they both looked like someone or something had torn into them. I checked inside each one and found sleeping bags and general camp equipment strewn about. I did my best not to disturb anything. When I came to the second tent, I found something more disturbing. This tent was also in disarray, but as I looked I saw distinct drops of red. There was a notebook sitting near one of the sleeping bags. I picked it up and paged through it. October 3rd. We headed out for our annual fishing trip this morning. Mom wasn't too happy, but we told her we'd be back tomorrow. The drive to the boat launch was kinda long but we filled the time talking about all the fish we were gonna catch and generally telling stories about the area. Dad tried to scare me with a story about a cryptid that lives in the area, but I knew he was just yanking my chain. We got to the boat launch and headed out into the water without too much of a hitch. Uncle Roger nearly fell in trying to get the boat undone. He didn't find it nearly as funny as Dad and I did. Once we were out on the lake and had our lines in the water, he seemed to settle in and enjoy himself. After a few beers, he was laughing about it with us. We caught a couple of fish but they were too small and we had to throw them back. Dad said he'd heard about a good spot up by Wolf Creek. We had better luck when we got there. 
Uncle Roger caught three largemouth bass and I caught two. Dad had a big one on his line, but it got loose before we could net it. It was starting to get dark, so Dad said we should go to one of the rural campsites. We pulled the boat up to shore and tied it to a large tree, then took our gear and hiked to the campsite. There wasn't anyone else there, which Dad said was odd, because the site is normally full. We unpacked and set up our tents, and Dad got a fire going while Uncle Roger cleaned the fish. We ate and laughed and talked until it was dark and we turned in for the evening. Dad said there was a better fishing spot further west and he wanted to go there early in the morning before we headed back to the cabin. It's the middle of the night and Dad is playing a joke on me. I woke up for some reason and he wasn't in the tent. I could hear a rustling outside along with something pawing the ground and snorting. I knew it was Dad trying to scare me. He and Uncle Roger had been telling cryptid stories while we ate supper. I told them they weren't gonna scare me like they did last year. They just looked at each other and smiled. I knew they would have something up their sleeves. I didn't bother to turn the light on or go out and check. I knew they would just run away and hide, pretending to be a creature I had scared off. Then in the morning, they would ask each other if they heard the commotion, hoping to scare me. I wasn't falling for it. One thing you learn from having a prankster for a dad is not to believe anything you see, or in this case, hear. I rolled over and tried to go back to sleep, but dad was making it tough. He was stomping and growling around so loud trying to get my attention, but I wasn't having it. When I got up in the morning and went outside, the camp had been destroyed. Uncle Roger asked if I had heard anything last night and I played along saying I'd heard some creature outside our tent but I was too scared to go out and check. He made a good show of searching for dad and seeming genuinely concerned. I was just waiting for dad to get tired of the game and come back to the campsite. As the morning wore on, Uncle Roger started talking about going to look for him. I wanted to tell him I hadn't fallen for their little prank but didn't want to spoil their fun. When noon rolled around and dad wasn't back, I started to get worried. Maybe he had fallen and hit his head on a rock or something. Uncle Roger was beside himself. He told me he would have already gone looking for dad, but didn't want to leave me alone at the camp. We decided to go look for him. Uncle Roger found what looked like a scuffle and we headed off in that direction. He told me to stay right with him as we struggled through the forest looking for any sign of dad. I was starting to doubt that this was a prank. I was getting worried about dad. The further we went the more I realized how wrong I'd been. I wanted dad to jump out and scare me just so I'd know he was okay. We walked around for hours, searching for him, but we couldn't find him. I was beyond worried now and I could tell Uncle Roger was too, but he didn't let on. He just kept saying dad was probably already back at the campsite now. When the sun started sinking low in the sky, we gave up our search and headed back. Twice, we lost our way and had to double back to get to the site. There weren't many trails out here, at least not that people had made. When we got back to the site, I ran to our tent, hoping he would be there, but he wasn't. We ate a quick supper and turned in for the night. Uncle Roger promised me he would wake me up when Dad came back. October 4th. Uncle Roger never woke me. Dad didn't come back. I said we should call for help but he told me Dad had the only phone. We were trying to decide what to do when we heard a rustling in the woods and the birds went silent. We looked around for the source of the noise, and unfortunately, we found it. There was a thing coming toward us. It stood on its back hind legs and its body made these loud cracking sounds like its bones were snapping into or out of place echoing all around us. This thing was huge. I literally froze. My body refused to move as this horror came toward us. Uncle Roger grabbed me and yanked me over behind his tent. We tried to hide. But this thing saw us and let out a massive roar. We were so close I could see blood on its claws and teeth. I prayed it wasn't dad's. WH. What do we do? I said. He put his finger up to his lips. It looked over at us and then went into my tent like it was searching for something. Come on, Uncle Roger said. We snuck away from the monster as quietly as possible. We slipped down the bank of the creek and walked downstream in the water. Where are we going? I whispered. There's a bridge downstream. If we're quiet enough and that thing loses our scent, we could hide under it and hope it goes away. I focused on walking as quietly as I could through the water. The sound of the creek was loud, so I was hopeful it wouldn't see or hear us. It seemed like forever until we reached the bridge. It was a small, wooden bridge that spanned the creek allowing hikers to pass over. There wasn't a lot of cover. We tried to wedge ourselves into the shadows at the furthest end of it. Time slowed to a standstill as I sat there on the uncomfortable rocks, shivering. Neither of us had our jackets on, and the sun had gone down, taking the warm air with it. I started to doze when I felt a nudge. 
I looked up and Uncle Roger was motioning me to be quiet. I was about to ask why when I heard the creak of a board on the bridge right above my head. It wasn't a steady walk of a hiker going down the trail, it was a slow, deliberate step on someone sneaking. Or hunting. I listened in mortal terror as the board slowly gave way to the weight of whatever was on it. One. Slow. Step. At. A. Time. As if I wasn't cold enough, my teeth began to chatter with fear. It couldn't have been very loud. Uncle Roger barely heard it and went into silent convulsions motioning me to stop. I bit my tongue to keep the noise down and continued to listen. Only there was nothing to listen to. Whatever was on the bridge had stopped moving. It was as if it was listening to be sure it had heard something. I strained my ears to listen for any movement. When I did, I heard sniffing. The thing was trying to catch our scent. For the first time, I noticed there was a slight breeze blowing. It was blowing in the same direction the water flowed, but I had no idea which side of the bridge the creature was on. The wind could be our savior or our doom. Another slow footstep sounded like a bomb going off as the board creaked beneath it. For the briefest of moments, it seemed like it was moving away toward the far end of the bridge. I hoped and prayed that was the case as another footstep sounded, then another. I breathed a silent sigh of relief as I heard it step off the edge of the bridge and onto the trail. My relief was short-lived though as I saw a face peek around the corner and peer onto the bridge. I froze in terror as this thing that looked like a giant monstrous dog walking on its hind legs, snuck around the corner of the bridge and dipped its feet into the water. It sniffed the air and poked its snout into the shadows under the far side of the bridge. Coming up empty, it turned its focus to the side of the bridge where we were hiding. Daylight had faded to dusk. There was precious little light to see by. That was our only saving grace, the shadows were darker here, making us nearly invisible. But that was rapidly ending as the beast approached. My mind was vapor locked. I had no clue what to do. Running would just give us away more quickly. It was looking like our only choice was to die. At that moment I was 100% sure of what had happened to dad. Hot tears streamed down my cheeks at the thought of my father being torn apart by this monster. As I prepared to die, I felt Uncle Roger lean over a little closer. He was right in front of me and it was hard to see the monster. I saw his hand move down toward the ground and pick up a stone the size of his fist. I knew right away what was happening. He was trying to shield me. He would offer himself as a sacrifice to protect me. My tears redoubled making it hard to see. The monster was almost on us. It hadn't acted like it knew we were there, but at this point, it didn't matter. A few more steps and all doubt would be removed. I saw it reach out with its terrible claws that nearly touched Uncle Roger's nose. This was it. Suddenly it stopped. It lifted its head and sniffed the air. I saw the hair on its back, bristle, then in a heartbeat, it disappeared. Uncle Roger slowly stood and looked around. I tried to do the same, but my legs didn't want to cooperate. I dislodged some stones as I stood, making a little noise and causing Uncle Roger to hiss at me. We stood silently waiting for that thing to come jumping out at us from whatever hiding place it was in. After a few minutes, I began to hope that we were okay. Uncle Roger led the way back to our camp. He said we should change into dry clothes and get a little rest. It felt so good to be warm again. I snuggled up in my sleeping bag and wrote this message so that if we don't make it, someone would know what happened. I hope my dad was as lucky as we were. I read through the entire message, then went back and reread the description of the creature. If it was what I thought it was, it was amazing they were still alive. Knowing what I was tracking put me on guard and made me wonder if I was being hunted right now. If it had intentionally left things lay so it could ensnare another victim. I didn't have much hope of finding them, but I would look anyway. I started with the tracks in the camp, specifically the ones around the tents. It seemed like the boy and his uncle had gone towards the creek. The creature's tracks went that way too. It followed them to the creek where its tracks seemed to wander around as if it had lost its prey. I saw where they went into the water to throw off its scent. Smart move. I followed the meandering tracks until they came to a small bridge that forded the creek. The tracks went over the bridge, then through the creek underneath it. That didn't make sense unless they were hiding in the shadows. The creature's tracks made a sudden turn and went toward the trail then up a hill, almost like something spooked it. If it was what I thought, I couldn't imagine anything spooking it. I followed the creature tracks up over the hill, then they doubled back and followed the creek from the top of the ridge. I noticed there was a good view of the creek. It didn't make sense to be going this way until I found myself back in the camp. It had put them right back in its sights. I was confused for a while. I couldn't find a second set of tracks where they left the second time. If the creature had slaughtered them at the campsite there would be a lot more blood, 
But there wasn't. In fact, I couldn't find any proof they'd come back. Then it hit me. I went back and looked at the tracks again. There were a few here and there that were doubled. The boy and his uncle must have come back here after the bridge, then left again the same way as before. The disturbing thing was I still hadn't seen any tracks of the father. I circled around the camp slowly, looking for anything I might have missed. Eventually, I found a set of adult tracks leaving a tent and going to the edge of the trees. They stopped facing a tree. There was a dark spot on the bark a couple of feet up. This had the earmarks of a late night bathroom break. But the confusing thing was the tracks never returned. Like he had stopped there to relieve himself and then just disappeared. I searched all around the tree when I made a startling discovery. There were flecks of blood farther up on the bark. I circled out further from the tree and found my terrible discovery. Tracks of the creature with drops of blood beside it. My marrow turned to ice at the implication. I followed my new trail hoping I wouldn't find what my mind was telling me I would. I tried to report to the station on my radio, but strangely all I got in response was static. I knew there were areas out here that didn't get good reception, but I didn't think this was one of them, right near a posted campsite, just off a trail. I decided I would try again later. I adjusted my backpack and started off after my prey. As a precaution, I pulled out my sidearm and made sure it was loaded. It seemed like a silly thing to do. But when dealing with a dangerous alpha predator, it's best to make sure you're ready to shoot. My hand shook a little when I put my gun back in its holster. I knew this was dangerous. I knew it would be just as easy to go back to the station and let search and rescue take care of it. But I also knew that there was a man who was in the clutches of a deadly creature and he was losing blood. I didn't have time to waste. I followed the tracks as best I could through the brush and fallen trees. I would lose the trail sometimes only to pick it up again when I found a few more drops of blood. The tracks ran along the base of the hill heading west until it came to a stop. It was right in front of a mountain. I looked all around but the trail had disappeared. Finally, in desperation, I looked up and noticed a cave part way up the mountain. I thought about going up there but was unsure. That could be the home of this creature, or it could be the home of a dozen other animals, none of which would appreciate me storming into their living room unannounced. After another thorough look around the area, I decided it was likely where my prey had gone. Clouds had been rolling in all day and now decided they were done playing nice. The rain began slowly enough but was soon coming down in sheets. The cave was looking better as I covered my eyes and tried to see where I was going. It was raining so hard I couldn't see the cave anymore. I just kept pressing forward in what I hoped was a straight line, over fallen trees, through brush and rapidly rising streams. I finally looked up and saw I was at the base of the mountain. My direction was off by a little bit and I had ended up a few dozen yards to the right of it, but it was no matter. I started climbing the mountain, being extra careful of my footing, especially in this torrential downpour. After a few slips, including one that had me nearly tumbling off the mountain, I made it to the mouth of the cave. I slipped inside and enjoyed a moment without water dumping on me. I looked down and the water dripping off of me made a little puddle like I had brought my own rain cloud into the cave with me. I shook off as much water as I could as quietly as possible. The rain pouring down outside made loud splashes inside the cave. It would have been difficult to hear anything else, but I still wanted to be sure. I unbuckled and sat the backpack down just inside the mouth of the cave. The rain had made it gain extra weight and I didn't know if I would have to move fast. I opened my pack and got out my bottle of water and drank. It had been a while since I had drank anything and I chugged half of it down. I closed it and saved the other half for if I got out of here alive. With that happy thought rattling around in my brain, I stowed the water bottle back in my pack and pulled out a small flashlight. I turned it on while pointing it at the floor. The bright beam illuminated the cave. It was large as caves go. I could stand up in it and not reach the ceiling. There were many boulders and stones, it wasn't a smooth floor. The walls were rough, there weren't any cave drawings in here. I walked slowly, each step felt like I was closer to my doom. I pulled out my gun and held it tightly, the sense of foreboding thick in the air. Two thoughts impressed themselves on me. Firing a gun in here would probably deafen me and the stench was horrific. It smelled like an open sewer in the middle of August. As I crept deeper into the cave, the sounds of the rain diminished, replaced by an eerie silence. I could hear the step of my feet, my breathing, and my heart pounding. As I was seriously considering turning around and leaving, when I saw something ahead of me move. It was big. At least as big as me. I dove against the wall for some cover, forgetting that I was holding a bright light in my hand so it didn't matter if I tried to hide as long as the light was on. I pointed it at the floor but didn't turn it off. I heard a shuffling sound getting closer. 
I was tempted to turn off the light but giving the edge to this creature was not a good idea. It already had the home field advantage. I heard it sniffing, but I couldn't see it yet. I decided to find out more by bringing my light up and shining it deeper into the cave. I got the shock of my life when my light landed on the creature and it was only a few steps away. It was big, at least 6 feet tall, and looked like a dog, with a long snout, only its body seemed elongated. It stood on its hind legs and had hands attached to muscular arms. Overall it looked like a nightmare.